Avasara Yape Hamun Gurwane. Good evening, everyone. I cordially welcome you all for the 14th lecture of the short course on cultural linkages toward Asian ideology. Uh, today, we have invited Honorable Gopite Sumangala Thero to conduct a lecture on the light of Asia in the proper light to fulfill the learning outcomes of this short course. The program for today is such that the lecture is scheduled to be for 45 minutes with a short break of five minutes followed by another 30 minutes of the lecture and a discussion. Hamdurane, we are profoundly honored to have you with us here and we warmly welcome you to deliver this lecture. Thank you. So, everyone, welcome to our Dhamma School. First of all, uh, thank you very much for having invited me to this discussion. And uh, special thanks for the organizers and participants and especially uh, our technical staff, our technical staff. So uh, we know that in Sri Lanka, there's a Buddhism, not only in Sri Lanka, but lots of Asian countries and around the world, there are lots of Buddhism. Buddhism is a religion, but it's better to understand that the authentic teaching of the Buddha is not a religion. It's not a believing system. Authentic teaching of the Buddha is a behavioral path. Therefore, the authentic teaching of the Buddha has nothing to do with these Buddhisms. However, today we are trying to explain some Dhamma, that means teachings of the Buddha, authentic part of the these teachings. All right. So, in generally, people are going to various sources, such as Buddhist temples, Buddhist monasteries, and modern day mass media, television, radio, etc., for listening to them. For listening to them. So, my question is what do you want to? learn or oh, what do you want to listen as them what should be learned as them in a similar manner if a buddhist monk or lay person if they teach them what should they teach us as them so what should be learned as Dhamma and what should be taught as them? For getting an idea about this matter, there's a, an interesting sermon of the Buddha, very short but interesting sermon. Let's have a look. The Sutta is called Patama Kala Sutta. Patama means the first Kala means Kala, sutta, sutta means sermon. So first Sutta called Kala. The Buddha uttered, Chaptaro me bhikkavi, Kala. Practitioners, there are four Kala. What are these four? Katame Chattaro. Buddha asked the question and replied as well. The first one. Kalena Dhamma Savana. Dhamma Savana means listening to Dhamma. Second one. Kalena Dhamma Sakacha. Dhamma Sakacha means discussing Dhamma. Third one. Kalena Samatu. Samatu is a meditative technique. Samatu means calming down the mind. Or tranquilize the mind. The fourth one, Kalena Vipassana. Vipassana is an another meditative technique. To calm down the mind, the mind must have gone through some turbulence. Therefore, using Samatho, we are able to calm down the mind. But Vipassana 
exceeds samadhi. Vipassana is for uprooting the origin or the seed of the turbulence. Therefore, Vipassana is for uprooting. Samato and Vipassana both are meditative techniques. We call them Bahavan. Imeko Bhikkave Chattaro Pad. Practitioners, these are the four paths. So my next question is, why should we listen to them? Why should we discuss them? Why should we exercise some of them? Why should we exercise Vipassana? What's the aim of all these four activities? What's the aim for all these four activities? In this sutta, there must be the path to the Nibba. Therefore, in Magadhi language, the term Kalena is made up of two words. Kala plus no. No means no. Or oh, to eliminate. Kala means dirt, mental dirt, mental impurity, or oh, impure thoughts. Impure thoughts. So we call them chiles. Killings, impure thoughts. Then, Kalena means eliminate the impure thoughts, eliminate killings. Therefore, now we have got a deeper meaning of the term Kali. Therefore, What should be learned as Dhamma and what should be taught as Dhamma? The methodology of eliminating kilesa. The methodology of eliminating kilesa. So now we have got a deeper meaning, Dhamma meaning, supramundane meaning of the term Kali. We should listen to Dhamma for eliminating kilesa. We should discuss the Dhamma for eliminating kilesa. We should exercise Samatu for eliminating kilesa. We should exercise Vipassana for eliminating kilesa. So, what are these kilesa? What are these mental impurities? What are these impure thoughts? Because if we want to eliminate, obviously, we have to recognize them. What are these? Impure thoughts. They are called Raga, Dosa, and more. Raga, Dosa, and more. These impure thoughts are rising in our mind. So, are you able to recognize? Rag, those, and more. What is rag? Rag is the arising, like in nature, the like in nature arising in our mind, the pleasant nature arising in our mind. The pleasant nature arising in our mind, progresses onto contentment. Pleasure, love, desire, 
craving. And attachment, etc. Attachment. A bondage. Which kind of bondage? A pleasant, pleasurable bondage. So, what's the root cause for craving? What's the root cause for desire? What's the root cause for love? Raga. The light in nature arising in our mind. When raga intention arises in our mind, we feel that we are liking somebody or something. So we are we feel that we are willing to taste it. We are willing to have it. We are willing to experience it. We are willing to possess it. Therefore, Raga, the light in nature arising in our mind, is a mental extreme. What is those? Are you able to recognize those arising in your mind? Dosa or Dvesa means the second version. Second version of what? The second version of the first version. First version is the like in nature. So its second version is the dislike in nature. The unpleasant nature arising in our mind. Dislike in nature progresses onto Discontent. Displeasure. Anger. Aversion. Hatred. Etc. The rising dislike in nature is an another attachment another bondage but unpleasant bondage when those intention arises in our mind we feel that we don't like something we feel that we don't want to feel it we don't want to have it we don't want to experience. Therefore, those is an another mental experience. So now we have got two mental experiences, rather and those, the life in nature and dislike in nature. So what about moha? Are you able to recognize the arising moha in your mind? So let's take an example. Suppose you are in a party, birthday party, something like that. So you offered a delicious piece of cake, very small piece of cake. As soon as you start to eat it, you feel a taste. So my question is, What's your judgment? What's your opinion about this cake after you tasted it? You may say, wow, it's delicious. It's tasty. I like it. That means a rather intention arose in your mind. The like in nature arose in your mind. So your judgment that you like, you want to have it, you want to feel that taste more and more. That means you have arrived such kind of extreme mental judgment. 
So now my question is, what have you done to arrive such kind of mental extreme from the moment that you start to feel the taste? What have you done? What kind of action have you taken? It's tasty, it's delicious, but relative to what? Respect to what? It's delicious, respect to, relative to. All the tastes which we have experienced previously. Therefore, automatically, when we start to feel this new taste, we have done such kind of comparison, such kind of measuring between the new taste and the previous taste. That comparison is called more. So comparative nature. Therefore, more can be defined as the subjective or incongruous comparison between the liking and the disliking natures. Therefore, if a raga thought arose in our mind, or if a dosa thought arose in our mind, before arising a raga or dosa, raga, dosa, and more. Raga, dosa, and more. So raga is arising in our mind. We experience it every day. Dosa is arising in our mind. We experience it every day. But initially, People who are inept in the Dhamma, it's impossible to recognize Moha. But when we start to uproot the arising Raga and Dosa, we will be able to recognize Moha gradually. All right. So what's the relationship of Raga, Dosa, and Moha with Nibba? What is Nibbana? What is Nibbana? Buddha has given such kind of definition like this. Raga kayu, dosa kayu, moha kayu, idan vuchati Nibbana. Severing the root of Raga, severing the root of dosa, Severing the root of moha is nibbana. Full eradication of raga, dosa, and moha is nibbana. Now let's have a look at a small sutta related to this discussion. Actually, this sutta is called nibbana sutta. It's a discussion between two persons. One person is named Samandapu. And another person, an other person is named Arihat Sariputta. Arihat Sariputta was one of the chief disciples of the Buddha. So the person named Samandapu came to Arihat Sariputta and asked a question. Nibbana Nibbana Ti Avso Sariputta Vujja. Arihat Sariputta, I heard the word. Nibbana Nibbana. Kataman nuko also Nibbana. What is Nibbana? How could we attain Nibbana? Then Ariyat Sariputta replied Raga kuyu, dosa kuyu, moha kuyu, idan vuchati Nibbana. Raga kuyu. Raga Kayu Dosa Kayu Dosa Kayu Moha Kayu Moha Kayu Kayu means to sever. So the answer was 
ragak kayu dosa kayu mohak kayu idan wujudi nibbana full eradication of raga dosa and moha is nibbana that means free from raga bond free from dosa bond free from moha bond free from all impure thoughts all impure thoughts all right so if you want to talk more about comparative nature moha why do we compare or what do we compare of course we compare what comes into contact with our sense basis i ear nose tongue and wood this why you are called sense basis for pleasure through these five sense basis for pleasure we accumulate information we accumulate experiences moreover our mind has the ability to seek out our past experiences therefore we have six sense basis or six sense sensory agencies sorry uh, we call six sensory faculties or basis so we compare when matter comes into contact with our sense basis matter in magadhi matter is called as rupa 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 means forms therefore what comes into contact with our sense basis can be explained as visual forms or sights through the eye auditory forms or sounds through the ear olfactory forms or smells through the nose gastrotory forms or taste through the tongue tactile forms or taxion by the body ideational forms or thoughts by the mind so we compare when matter comes into contact with our sense basis so what is matter made of in school we have learned the periodic table of elements hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon etc but according to the teaching of the buddha the matter is made of four great elements called patavi apu teju and vayu that means solidity fluidity heat and motion four great elements so we come there when matter comes into contact with our sense basis but we come there relative to what respect to what of course we come there respect to our past experiences in magadhi there's a word called asam asam Asava means corruptions, corrupted experiences, past corrupted experiences, or corrupted mental properties. Every individual carries his own accumulation of past corrupted experiences, a bag of asava. therefore my past corrupted experiences are different from yours my bag of asava is different from yours therefore my sensual pleasures my present sensual pleasures and my expectations my judgments my ideas are different from yours my measure in scale my yardage is different from yours therefore we should understand that 
every individual carries his own bag of us past corrupted experiences. Therefore, this us about these past corrupted experiences manipulate our judgments. We are not free to take any opinion or decide something free. What we contact by our sense faculties. Therefore, us manipulate our judgments. So my question is now, what's the relationship of our server with Raga, Dosa, and Mo? Full eradication of Raga, Dosa, and Mo is called Nibbana. So Buddha has given many definitions for Nibbana. Asava kayo nibbana. Severing asava, full eradication of asava is nibbana too. There are more definitions for nibbana. Tanha kayo nibbana. Severing tanha, that means craving. Severing tanha is nibbana. Full eradication of Tanha is Nibbana. Kamma Kayo Nibbana. Severing Kamma is Nibbana. Therefore, when we say Raga Kayo, Dosa Kayo, Moha Kayo, Nibbana, equal to Asava Kayo Nibbana. They all are equal to Tanha Kayo Nibbana. And they all are equal to Kamma Kayo. So we should understand well that what we have to do for attaining Nibbana and what is Nibbana? The purified mental state. It's Nibbana. Therefore, Nibbana never could be attained by praying or by, by chanting. Nibbana never could be attained by begging from somebody or begging from something like pagodas, statues, trees, rocks, etc. Nibbana could be attained only by hard work, eliminating the arising impurities, rag, dosa, and more. All right. So, we have learned in school. Albert Einstein discovered such kind of theory. We call it theory of relativity. Isaac Newton discovered the theory of gravity. So, my question is, what did the Buddha discover? What is his theory? We call it Dhamma. So what is his Dhamma? Or what is his theory? We call it theory of cause and effect. So my question is, according to the theory of Buddha, cause and effect, what are the causes? What are the effects? What are the causes and what are the effects? So what is this theory of cause? The Buddha discovered. The Buddha discovered 
how this universe works. How we continue our existence. What are the causes for our existence? What are the causes? He discovered that there are three causes. What are they? They are called Raga, Dosa, and Moon. There are three causes. These causes arise in our mind. So what's the effect? The effect is called existence. Existence. Existence of what? Existence in terms of birth. Aging, sickness, death, pain, distress, sorrow, lamentation, and despair. Existence in terms of dukkha. Dukkha, it's the effect. The existence of Dukkha. The existence of this universe. Therefore, Rag, Dus, and Mo. They arise in Rag, Dus, and Mo. Therefore, these causes arise in our mind. As long as we generate these causes as a result of engaging with these causes we keep continuing into the existence we call it sansar sansar the cyclical of life just mean birth and it. So, now my question is, have you ever experienced the raga intention arise in your mind? Have you experienced it? Have you experienced those, the dislike in nature arising in your mind? Have you experienced? Have you experienced more the comparative nature arising in your mind? So you have experienced it. So it's a truth. All right. So you have experienced raga intention arising in your mind, dosa intention arising in your mind, moha intention arising in your mind. In the morning, we say that sun arises. Similar to that sun. We say, raga intention arises, dosa intention arises, moha intention arises. Raga, dosa, and moha in common, we call them sun, S A N sun.
rising. In Magadi, it's called Udal. So San Udal. That means arising of Rag, Dose, and Moha intentions. So it's a truth. Because you have experienced. The Buddha called it Samudaya truth. Samudaya truth. So, arising raga intention means we create a pleasant attachment. Arising dosa intention means we create an unpleasant attachment. Arising moha intention means we create a comparative attachment. So, arising raga, those moha, we have experienced. That means we have created raga bondage, those bondages, and moha bondages. Raga, those moha attachments. So, have you ever experienced the consequence, the consequences of raga, dosa, and moha attachments? Have you ever experienced them? So what's the consequence of your raga, dosa, and moha attachments? It's called dukkha. So it's a truth, the truth of Dukkha. So the theory of Buddha, cause and effect. Therefore, the Buddha discovered, actually he experienced a methodology to be free of Dukkha, to be free of existence. Therefore, he taught us, if we want to liberate from Dukkha, if we want to liberate ourselves from existence, what we have to do? What we have to do? We have to change the causes. We have to destroy the causes. The Buddha, if the Buddha say, if the Buddha says causes, he's talking about causes for Dukkha. There are only three causes. Rag, Dosa, and Mu. Therefore, his teaching is very simple to understand. If we want to liberate ourselves from Dukkha, we have to do a very simple task. What we have to do? When a raga intention arises, we have to separate it. We have to detach it. We have to renounce it. Would they call it Vitra? Vitra. Vita means separation, detachment, 
or renunciation, vitara. When a dosa intention arises, we have to renounce it. It's called vita dosa. When a moha intention arises, we have to renounce it. It's called vita moha. So if we are able to renounce the arising rag and arising dose and arising more. So we have changed the causes. So now what's the effect? If we are able to Renounce the arising rag, dose, and more. We are free from look. We are free from existence. It's called Nipa. It's called Nipa. Nipa. Free from ragabon. Free from those bond and free from more. The Buddha heard Nibbanan Paraman Sukham. Nibbanan Paraman Sukham. The greatest ultimate bliss is Nibban. Liberation from Raga bondage, liberation from dosa bondage, and liberation from moha bondage. So, this process of renunciation, we call it process of purification. The process of purification. Purify the arising impure thoughts from impure state to pure state. The Buddha called it Nirod. Nirod. The term Nirod is made up of Two words can understand it like that. Ni means no or ending. Roda means wheeling, wheeling the thoughts. So the Buddha uttered Yang Kinchi Samudaya Dhamma. Sabbantan Niroda Dhamma. You should understand well that the teaching of the Buddha is based on intentions. Intentions. In Magadhi, we call them Dhamma. Dhamma means intention. So, the Buddha uttered, Yankim che samudaya dhamman sabhantan nirodha. That means, if you want to liberate from existence, if you want to liberate from dukkha, what we have to do? Renounce the arising rag, dosa, and moha. Purify the arising rag, dosa, and moha intentions. That's the unique path. That's the unique way to be free from dukkha. So this is the path. This is the unique path 
to be free from the therefore entire teaching of the buddha is based on this theory so his lifetime 45 years he has done almost about uh, 35 40000 sermons but you should understand with that all his teachings all his sermons based on his theory his sermon could be long one, short one, and very short one, etc. But he's always talking about this theory, the theory of cause and effect. If I explain it another way, four Arya truths. Four Arya truths. The truth of Duk. Arya truth of Duk. Arya truth of Dukkha Samudhi. Arya truth of Dukkha Nirod. Arya truth of path to achieve Dukkha Nirod. The Buddha called them Four Arya truths. Four Arya truths. Arya. Four Arya truths. What's the meaning of Arya? To understand what's the meaning of the term Arya, you should understand what's the meaning of the term Hriya. Hriya. Ria means journey. Arya means ah detachment or renunciation. Renounce the journey. It's called Arya. Therefore, Rhea means, journey means existence. Therefore, Arya means, give the existence up. Therefore, if we want to give the existence up, we have to experience these four truths. But people who are inept in the Dhamma have no idea about this Dhamma. Therefore, Buddha called them Dukya Jnana, ignorance of Dukkha. Dukkha Samudaya Jnana, ignorance of Arising of Dukkha. Causes for Dukkha. Dukkha Nirode Ajnana. Ignorance of Dukkha Nirode. Dukkha Nirode Gami Patipadaya Ajnana. Ignorance of the path. It's called Avijja. That means ignorance. Ignorance of four Arya truths. Ignorance of four Arya truths. So, the 
the purification of arising raga, dosa, and moha intentions can be done. That's me. Experiencing Arya truths can be done. Liberate from Dukkha can be experienced. Therefore, the teaching of the Buddha could be experienced even today. But the most important thing is the path. The path. You should understand well that. For example, imagine that you are in a classroom or you are in uh, walking uh, along a street or somewhere else. So someone insult, someone insult, or someone pass unwanted hint. So you hear this word, unpleasant word, and what happens? You? you get angry. How long does it take to get angry? How long does it take to get angry? We get angry instant. Millisecond. So my question is, if I want to, if we want to renounce the arising anger, How long, how much time is there? If you want to renounce, there are eyes in those. We have to be very clever. We have to active immediate. Therefore, The rag and those and more intentions arise very fast, very quick, instant. Therefore, if we want to change these causes, if we want to renounce these causes, we have a less than a second of the time. Therefore, in this very present moment, at this very present moment, impure thoughts are rising. On the spot, at that very present moment, we have to renounce. That process is called Bhavan. So, how much time, how long time do we have to bhava, exercise bhava? Less than a second. So, my next question is Are we able to exercise bhavana, keeping our sensory basis closed? Are we able to exercise bhavana, keeping our sense bases closed? No, it's impossible. Because when we keep our sense bases closed, we have nothing to do bhavana. Bhavana means use. Bhavana means 
apply. Bahavana means exercise. Therefore, if you want to practice the Buddha Bhavana, Bahavana, which discovered by Buddha, we have to keep our sense bases open. Open. When our sense bases are open, then they are arising raga, dosa, and moha intentions. So, the Buddha called when uh, impure intentions, raga, dosa, moha, he divided, the Buddha divided his intention to states. A state of seed and a state of birth. So, when our anger starts to rise, we call it a state of seed. If our anger arose, we call it a state of birth. Therefore, Raga, Dosa, and Moha intentions in a state of seed, seed, we call them Bhava. In Magadhi language, seeds are called Bhava. We have to uproot. Raga, dosa, and moha seeds before arising. Therefore, there's a word uproot the seeds. Uproot means Buddha. Buddha means to uproot. So, if someone starts to uproot the arising seeds of raga, dosa, or moha intentions, that action is called Buddhist or Bhav. Otherwise, we are not Buddhist. So, if someone asks a question, what makes one a Buddhist? If we uproot the seeds of impure thoughts, rag, dosa, and moha, that action is called Buddhist. So, we were talking about Bahavan. The path, would they call it Majjima Patipal? That means Majjima path. What's the term of Majji? Sorry, what's the meaning of the term Majji? Majjima. The term Majjima is made up of two words, of course. Majji plus Ma. Ma means to liberate or to liberate forever. Much means intoxication or drunkness. So, which kind of intoxication or which kind of drunkness are we talking about?
they know that we get drunk by alcohol. We get drunk by drugs. But we are able to get drunk by power. Drunk by or drunk with power. Drunk with money. Drunk with sex. Drunk with our titles. So there are lots of things which we get drunk, which we get intoxicated. But all kind of intoxications, the root cause of all kind of intoxications, drunkness, rag, dus, and moha intentions. Therefore, the path to be free from intoxication of rag, dus, and moha intentions. It's called majjima patipada. Majjima path. So, um, the Buddha introduced two kind of meditative techniques. We call them Samatu and Vipassana. Samatu and Vipassana. The best way to get rid of defiling thoughts, the Buddha introduced Samato vipassana in tandem. Samatha technique in tandem with vipassana. Therefore, the Buddha introduced ana pana sati samadhi bhavana. Ana pana sati samadhi bhavana. Ana means Associate. Pana means dissociate. Sati, associate and dissociate. Sati. Sati. Sati means the Buddha introduced new measuring scale. It's called Sati. Sati means verify the compatibility with the theory of cause and effect. It's called Sati. Samadhi. Samadhi means concentration. So, associate and dissociate according to the theory of cause and effect. So, if we concentrate for it, it's called Samadhi. An, pan, sati, Samadhi. Anapana Sati Samadhi could be practiced in tandem, Samadhu and Vipassana. Buddha introduced very simple technique to exercise. Anapana Sati Samadhi Bhav. We call them four protective meditations. Four protective meditations. There are four techniques. We call them Buddha Nusati. 
மரணானுசக்தி அசுபானுசக்தி அண்ட் மெத்தானுஸ் புத்தானுசக்தி மெத்தாச்ச அசுபங் மரணானுசக்தி இத்திமா சதுராரக்கா பிக்குபாவேசி that's mean if we practice these four anusat anusat the all have this term sat we call them sati bhavana too sati if we practice this sati bhavana this four protective technique we use them as samatu and vipassana in tandem samatu and vipassana in tandem this kind of methodology we are able to apply it in very present moment in this very present moment when the raga intention arises when more intention arises when more dosa intention arises in this very present moment to renounce them to purify impure intentions if we practice if we apply this methodology the majjima patipada majjima patipada or we call them aryo attangiko maggu aryo eightfold path it's a path of eight factors if we practice samatu and vipassana or when we practice ஆன பான சதி சமாதி பாவனா தட்ஸ் மீன் அசோசியேட் பியோ இன்டென்ஷன்ஸ் டிசோசியேட் இம்பியோ இன்டென்ஷன்ஸ் அக்கார்டிங் டு தி தியரி ஆஃப் காஸ் அண்ட் எஃபெக்ட் when you practice is an pan sati samadhi bhavana it's possible to experience aryo attangiko maggu these eight factors work together and simultaneously therefore these eight factors we call them samadhi sanmadhi dikti means view san means rag dosh and mo ma means to liberate to liberate for it therefore view to liberate from rag dosa and moha it's called samadhi samadhi is forana of these factors of these eight factors samadhi pubbang samadhi and second practice samma sankap sankap means intention which kind of intentions sanma rag dosh moh san means rag dosh moh ma means to liberate
Sanma Sanka. Sanma Vacha. Vacha means words. Which kind of words? Sanma words. San means rag, dos, and mo. Ma means to liberate. Samma kamant. Kamant means kam ant. Kam ant. End in the kam. Sanma. Ma means to liberate. San means rag, dos, and mo. Samma aji. Ajiva means life. O. Giving up. Give the existence up. Ma means to liberate, sun means rag, dos, and mo. Samma vayamo. Vayamo means effort. Sanma. Ma means to liberate, sun means rag, dos, mo. So, which kind of effort? Effort to liberate from rag, dos, and mo. It's called samma vayamo. Samma sati. Sati means verify the compatibility with the theory of cause and effect. It's called sati. We apply the theory to be free from rag, dos, and moon. Samma sati. The last factor is samma samadhi. Samadhi means concentration. What kind of concentration? Sanma. To liberate from rag, dos, and mo. Therefore, when we practice ana, pana, sati, samadhi, mahavana as Samatu in tandem with vipassana, less than uh, one second. That's mean instantly when raga and dosa and moha intentions arise, when they arise, we have to apply this methodology. We know that raga, dosa, and moha. They are impure thoughts. So if we want to dissociate these impure thoughts, obviously we have to associate pure thoughts. What are these pure thoughts? If Raga, Dosa and Moha intentions are impure thoughts, what are the pure thoughts? They are called Metta. Metta means loving kindness. Karuna. Karuna means, generally we call them kindness. But Karuna means remove obstacles on the path to Nibba. Mudita means appreciate joy. Upekka means equanimity. So Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekka. And Asuba. Asuba means unattractive nature. And there are more intentions, more pure intentions. We call them Anicca Dukkha Anatta or Anicca Dukkha Viparinamadham. So Raga, Dosa, and Moha are the impure thoughts. We call them impure company. So what are the pure thoughts, pure intentions? They are called metta, karuna, mudita, upekka, subha, anichan, dukkhang, viparinamadha. They are the pure company, pure intentions. Therefore, when we apply this an Pan Sati Samadhi Bahava. Samato in tandem with Vipassana, what we practically do, 
we dissociate arising impure thoughts. To dissociate them, obviously we have to associate some pure thoughts. It's called associate and dissociate. That's mean an pan as pas. The Buddha uttered sab pap pas akarana kusalas upasampada. So if we do, if we practice this mechanism, it's the way to purify our mind. Sachitta pariyodapan etam buddha anusasana. It's the advice, it's the teaching to uproot all kind of impure seeds, raga seeds, dosa seeds, and moha seeds. So I would like to invite all of you, if you are interested, the authentic teaching of the Buddha, if you are free thinker, if you are truth seeker, I would invite, I would like to invite you to listen to our Dhamma talks, listen to our Dhamma preachings. And I would like to invite you to attend our Bhavana programs in our institute. And I would like to thank the organizers, participants, and our technical members for having helped us to organize this event and having given me this chance to talk with you. If there are any questions, now it's time to, because our time is already, time is gone. Uh, students? Do we have questions? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, please. So, so am I audible enough, sir? Yes, audible. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm officer cadet uh, K Nabevi Krama. So my yeah. question is, uh, you have showed us two paths as I've as how I have got this uh, lecture. So uh, one is Aryashtanga Marga and other one is uh, improving uh, Samatha and Vipassana Bhavana. So uh, my question is uh, how we can link these two to uh, grow our you know, day-to-day -day life. Okay, so actually Aryo uh, Attangiko Maggo, the eightfold path, eightfold path, and samato vipassana when we exercise samato and vipassana automatically we activate this mental process of eight factors called aryu attangiku mat for example imagine that you heard uh, some unwanted word, some insults. Okay, so as 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 soon as you heard that word, you get angry. So now we should understand that if we want to renounce the anger, we have to active immediately. So what we have to do practically? The Buddha taught us, apply immediately samatha. We call it metta anusati. We call it metta anusati. Apply the metta. So anger is arising in this very present moment. So what I have to do? Generate loving kindness. But not only love in kindness, because it's samatu. Immediately, 
when i am able to calm down the rise in anger it's called samatha tranquilize the rise in anger it's called samatha immediately i have to discover i have to explore what's the root what's the root cause for anger the root cause for anger is more because there is moha behind the those therefore i have to apply immediately vipassana to it's called maranaanusa it's called anicchan dukkham viparinam dhamma so if i apply immediately samatha and vipassana the result of this application must be that the rising dosha seed must be approved it's called buddhams it's the result it should be the result of applying samatha and vipassana in tandem so that moment when i apply samatha and vipassana the mental mechanism of eight factors should be activated for example the anger we call it miccha sankap the miccha sankap was to arise but i have generate instead of miccha sankap samma sankap loving kindness and that's when metta and anicchan dukkham viparinam dhamma that means i have purified anger i have purified anger intention to pure intention if we call it metta and anicchan dukkham viparinam dhamma it's called samma sankap therefore that moment when i apply samatha and vipassana i have done such kind of effort what kind of effort i have done such kind of effort to prevent the unwholesome anger not yet arise i have tried to prevent the unwholesome anger not yet arising but the anger is arising therefore i have i have to exercise such kind of effort to dissociate the unwholesome anger which is arising how can i dissociate it for that i have to exercise such kind of effort to generate pure intention wholesome intention called mettanusati loving kindness and maranaanusati anicchan dukkham viparinam dham and moreover i have to exercise such kind of effort to associate and maintain loving kindness and anicchan dukkham viparinam dhamma which is which are already arisen that's called samma vayam effort to effort to liberate from raga dosh and moha in this example we were talking about anger but in generally 
if we exercise samato and vipassana, our effort to liberate from raga, dosa, and more. Therefore, that moment we have activated samma sankap together with sammavaya. If we exercise this dhamma, means we are applying the theory of cause and effect. It's called sati. Therefore, simultaneously, we are applying samma sankap, samma vayamo, and samma sati. Simultaneously, that means that moment, automatically such kind of view was activated inside of our mind. What kind of view? View to liberate from raga, dosa, and moha. That's why Buddha called Samaditti Pubbangam. Samaditti is the forum. So, we have purified anger intention. That's meant purified our mind. The purified mind radiates in words and deeds. Therefore, we are free from three unwholesome actions in the mind and four unwholesome actions in words. Three unwholesome actions Indeed, that means we are free from 10 unwholesome actions. From the anger which was to arise. So that moment, not only Samaditi, Samazankapa, Samavaja, Samakamanta, chromatically, we have taken Samajiv. If the seven factors work together, that means in that moment, inside of this process, the eight factor, Samma Samadhi, Ariyo Samma Samadhi, is activated. Therefore, when we purify one impure intention from a state of impure to a state of pure, using samatha vipassana in tandem, we have activated this mental process. Ariyo attangiko magdo. Actually, not only eight factors in this process, we have activated 37 buddhic attributes. This is called Majjima Patipada, Majjima Path, Path to be free of intoxication, drunkness of rag, dosa, and more. Are you? Uh, Yes, yes, Dominator, yes, exactly answer. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Swami. Uh, uh, yes, I, 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 yes, I, I can. Okay, as uh, Reverend Sir, I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Management and Social Science and Humanities at KDU. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not asking a question, but I just want to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh, Reverend Sir uh, for the contribution done for this uh, program. And in fact, the program itself is cultural linkages towards an Asian ideology. Uh, yes. So the, uh, the kind of contribution that we could give from Sri Lanka, the, uh, the, the pristine uh, Buddha Dhamma, which is of course not just for Buddhists, but for everybody in the world. And the world is seeking remedies for all kinds of maladies uh, arising. And uh, in fact, Reverend Sir, we are very thankful to you because through this, there is an opening for our students to think. 
that what kind of solutions could be found for the problems that we face as individuals, as countries, as organizations. Um, and we are surrounded with all kinds of problems currently these days, especially. And uh, it is for us very important and valuable, I think, for the students, especially, uh, to go deeper into themselves and think deeply and why all these problems are there and the root causes, identification of root causes. I'm sure these set of students are really intelligent set of students, whether they are Buddhists, Hindus, Christians, or whatever, in spite of the differences in religion. They are a really intelligent set of students. I'm sure they will make the best use of this opportunity to unravel further and uh, learn about the, the mind and its wonderful power and also uh, what kind of uh, uh, things could be done to purify our minds and to that find solutions for our problems and then for the problems in the world. I, I thank you, Reverend Sir, once again uh, on behalf of the faculty. And also I'm thankful to Dr. Himanta uh, for organizing this uh, very important lecture in this program and also to Dr. Jayavadan for coordinating. There is a uh, there is a word of thanks, but I just wanted to butt in just to thank you, Reverend. So thank you so, so much. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, Sopat Deva. Anyway, if you have more questions about this uh, Dhamma talk, we are always available to any kind of answers in our institute. So you are welcome to our institute. And online, you can uh, watch our videos. We call uh, Bopitiya Sadham Pasala and Authentic Dhamma. Thank you very much. And Sopat Deva, everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to deliver the word of thanks on behalf of the students of the short course on cultural linkages to the Asian ideology. First, I would like to thank our lecturer, Venerable Bopitiya Sumangra Thera, for sharing his time and knowledge with us and for delivering this lecture amidst his busy schedule. Ham Jonea objects at the tone for this course by clearly discussing Buddhism in its proper light. We are blessed to have you contribute to this course. Next, I wish to thank Dr. M.M. Jayavardhana, Mr. Kitsri Amar Pringo, the Dean, Faculty of Management, Social Sciences and Humanities, and Dr. Hemant Premarathan, the course coordinator, and all of the staff at KDU for bringing this lecture together. Thank you. Last but not least, I thank all participants from our university for joining us today. Your participation has made this lecture a successful event, and I believe it has provided you with a new insight into the teachings of Buddha. To conclude, let me once more express my gratitude to Venerable Bopati Sumagra Thero for delivering today's lecture. Hamdrone, it's an honor to have you with us and your time and efforts are deeply appreciated. Thank you. <laughs>